everybody. I want to welcome you to this short video that's a ridiculously short guide to quantum mechanics. Of course, it's a lot more complex than what you're going to see here, but these are the main principles that you want to have in your head as we start to talk about light and matter and atomic structure. First off, what is quantum mechanics? Well, it's a branch of science that describes really, really small things. So subatomic particles, right? I can use quantum mechanics to describe protons and neutrons and electrons uh, and do very well with that. In fact, a lot of quantum mechanics is about what electrons do and how to describe them. I can use quantum mechanics to describe atoms. So if it's on the periodic table, you know, all the way up to 118 oganesson, I can use quantum mechanics to describe its behavior. Molecules. The simplest molecule there is, is actually the dihydrogen molecular ion. So two hydrogens bound together and it's a covalent bond sharing one electron. Quantum mechanics can do that. It can do really, really complicated molecules as well. You know, here's a slightly more complicated molecule, not super complicated as far as chemists go, but it's got six carbons and six hydrogens, it's called benzene. There's quantum mechanics for that as well. And last but not least, quantum mechanics can describe how supramolecular structures are held together. So supra just means big, a bunch of um, things like proteins. There are quantum mechanical aspects to proteins that we'd like to describe. Um, things like nanoparticles. So, you know, some of you might have actually bought socks that don't get smelly. Uh, those have little part, uh, nanoparticles of silver that are clusters of silver atoms that you need quantum mechanics to describe. If it's small, and when I say small, I mean less than about one nanometer in size, although it can get bigger. Quantum mechanics is for describing that. Our main principles of quantum mechanics are things that you've actually seen already. The first one is that waves have particle properties and particles have wave properties. There's a duality to them. And the equation that describes that was proposed by Louis de Broglie, so a French scientist. Remember that lambda is a wavelength. H is Planck's constant, which we'll see in other equations. M is the particle's mass and u is the particle's velocity. It's really actually its speed, right? How quickly it's traveling. So things that are very small in mass, things that are very light, and things that are very fast have uh, bigger wavelengths, and the size of the wavelength means that it needs quantum mechanics to describe it. So things that have appreciable de Broglie wavelengths, de Broglie wavelengths, they're about the same size as they are. Quantization of energy is a second principle of quantum mechanics, right? In fact, quantum and quantization come from the same root, discrete. There's an energy here and an energy here, but you can't be in between. And the way that we describe that is with the equation E equals H nu for light. There are other descriptions of quantization for atoms that we'll see later. But again, the idea that if I have energy, I can have an energy level here, I can have an energy level here, but I'm not allowed to be in between. Or like steps, quantization means steps. I can step on this step with my foot or I can step on this step with my foot. But if I try to put my foot in between, I'm gonna fall down. Same idea in a different way in quantum mechanics. The third principle of quantum mechanics, which I wanna take a quick look at now, is the idea of probability instead of certainty or wave functions. And we have a Greek letter for this, psi, or sometimes we use capital psi. So um, if you are an IU fan, of course, you recognize that letter, right? This letter is called psi. And what we can't do is we can't say an electron is here or an electron is here or an electron is here. I can say I have a map and there's a 90% chance that I live inside this map as the electron. Maps look different. They can be dumbbells, they can be clover shapes, but all of those maps are a probability. I cannot say with certainty where a particle is. And we do have an equation for that. 
that equation is called the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, right? So this equation down here is that. X is position. MU, you guys who have taken physics have seen P equals MV and you know that the word for that is momentum. And the basic idea is that this delta sign, so when I put a delta, it means uncertainty. Uncertainty is simply my ability to be able to describe with complete certainty something. So a big uncertainty means that I think it's here, but it could be anywhere in this range. A small uncertainty means it's between here and here. So an uncertainty in position is that. An uncertainty in momentum is I think I'm traveling between five miles an hour and 50 miles an hour, right? That's, that's uncertainty. It turns out that when you multiply those two uncertainties together, and this would have units of meters, and this would have units of kilogram meters per second, that the product of those two things has to be greater than or equal to h over 4 pi. And h is Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules time seconds. This is a typical what we call plug and chug equation. When you find the variables in the problem, you put them in the right space, you treat this like an equal sign instead of a greater than sign and go on with life. But the interpretation is the important part of our short guide to quantum mechanics. What it says is the more we know about a particle's momentum, and by the way, momentum is related to energy, right? The less we know about its position. And of course, vice versa. So, you know, make an eraser here. The idea is that if delta x goes up, then delta mu can go down in response, right? Because of this greater than or equal to. The more I know about position, or sorry, the less I know about position, because the higher the uncertainty gets, the more I know about momentum. Or the more certain I get about position, right? The uncertainty goes down, the less I know about momentum. They're on a seesaw. If one goes up, the other must go down. Why? The variables are what we'll call specially interrelated. I'm sorry, I can't be more specific than that. There's actually some pretty uh, deep calculus and uh, statistics that are underneath that. But just know that certain variables in quantum mechanics are tied together like this. It's irrevocable. Momentum and position are one pair like that. The more I know about one, the less I know about the other. Again, those are the principles of quantum mechanics, right? Going back, wave particle duality, quantization, and probability, not certainty. Those are the things that you need to keep in mind as we learn more about atomic structure because these principles are going to underlay everything you see going forward.